Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. This is Tani Lux, and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for the Painting Products at Corel. And I'm very excited because today's webinar is something new that we haven't done before, and it's all about caricature creation tips. And we have an expert artist that's going to share her tips with us, and that is Painter Master Rhoda Draws. Just a little background on Rhoda. She's definitely a woman of many talents because she has over 40 years of experience in art creation, with 22 of those focusing in digital art. Um, she does everything from fine art, illustration, live performance, caricature art, which we will be able to enjoy today. And she's also an invaluable contributor to our painter development because as a painter master, advisory council member, beta tester, um, she provides feedback that helps us to develop the future versions of Painter. And as you can see here on her screen, she is also the author of books to get you started in Painter. So um, the latest being the Digital Painting Fundamentals in Painter 12. So now I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Rhoda. Thank you very much, Tanya. It's really a pleasure to be here, and I appreciate uh, your very uh, lovely introduction. Um, if you look at the uh, cover for my Painter 11 book, you'll see it's um, the author is Rhoda Grossman. This was my name until uh, 2009 when I officially had it changed legally to Rhoda Draws. Um, I don't know why it took me so long to think of that, but uh, here we are. On the Painter 12 book, there's like a transition name here, Rhoda Grossman Draws. On the Painter 13 book, which will be out uh, later in this year, it'll be finally just Rhoda draws. Okay, caricature. What is it? I will read from a definition that I made up uh, that I think should work. An image that captures the essence of a face or gesture through distortion or simplification. It can be more distorted or more simplified depending on the style, and any style and any medium is possible for creating such things. These are pieces by the best in the business, uh, whose work I admire and uh, to a certain extent I'm influenced by. On the left, Philip Burke, an American artist who really exaggerates uh, in terms not only of the shapes and the angles and the positions, but also in, with color. I should add, by the way, that uh, this asymmetry is very exciting, and I cons consider symmetry to be an unnecessary uh, type of thing that does nobody any good. Uh, the centerpiece is by Hanok Piven, an Israeli caricature artist who's, who actually assembles uh, real uh, objects like this uh, overripe banana and two broken pieces of, uh, of glass uh, spectacles and then photographs them. On the right is perhaps the all-time uh, greatest caricature artist of the 20th century, Al Hirschfeld, who is known for his uh, fluid and, and beautiful line work. He's called the Line King. And uh, if you know Hirschfeld's work, you'll, you'll notice perhaps that there are a couple of um, uh, uh, his daughter's name was Nina, and he attempts to and, and does add his daughter's name to most of his work. So you see a Nina on each um, area of the sleeve where there's wrinkles. Those are Nina's. Here is a piece by David uh, Coles on the left and one by Sebastian Kruger, an amazing German artist, where we see David um, focuses on, on the simplify end of things and Sebastian Kruger is definitely uh, the exaggerator uh, in this area. David Coles once again showing his take on David Letterman and also Elton John. And I, uh, uh, both of these gentlemen have, um, have gap tooth smiles and I wanted to show them together because this is now a piece of mine, a studio piece that I created using uh, bits of facial features from other people in order to create the illusion that it's uh, Letterman. Actually, that mouth is uh, from Elton John. The nose is John Stewart. I can't remember where the eyes come from. The little dog has uh, two totally different eyes, again, going for asymmetry. And I think the teeth might uh, be from a, a grimace uh, by uh, John Goodman a few years back. So to show you how this 
developed. I'll take you through uh, the first stage of simply um, compiling all of the bits that I needed, the facial parts, that uh, I then um, dragged onto the canvas and had as individual layers. Uh, the layers were dropped and then blended together with uh, my favorite blending tool is the grainy water. Here the, the chair has been added, the wing chair and a little doggy. Um, I'll explain more thoroughly later when I do a live demo from a photo that uh, some of these um, techniques are done with a, uh, the scratchboard rake with color variability. That's how I get that uh, interesting look in the hair or in the fur of the dog. And there's a, a paper texture that I used for the, the 5 o'clock shadow on uh, his uh, upper lip and his chin and also as the texture on the dog biscuit. So at this point I have added some background again with a paper texture that involves letters of the alphabet, so again a reference to Letterman. And the smoke from the cigar is uh, created with a distortion tool that's just dragged through there. Also studio pieces that weren't quite as elaborate but also show that I combined um, some drawing with my favorite tool for, for sketching uh, a line in Painter is uh, the dry ink tool. And you'll see how I use that uh, more thoroughly later. Here we have um, some objects, photographs of sand dollars that I used for the eyes on uh, this fellow. I used a um, an item from the image portfolio, once again, these are seashells, and for uh, Condi's eye, uh, which looks very intense, I used a gradient fill. As you can see from the uh, Steve Jobs piece, I used the uh, logo, Apple logo, as one of his eyes. Well, um, I do occasionally uh, create studio pieces for publication, but the main thing that I use for, uh, that occupies me with regard to caricature is live entertainment at events, where I'm either hired to be basically the booth babe who attracts attention, literally drawing a crowd, uh, so that uh, the attendees there can be um, uh, given uh, some sort of a uh, uh, promotion by whoever it is that uh, is in charge of, of that particular booth. This was at Oracle Open World. Um, when I particularly like something, I ask the subject to allow me to photograph him, and I use that as a sample or promotional piece. Here I am at a corporate event in the evening at some sort of club, and uh, this fellow is in the process of getting his caricature done. And here's how that turned out. So another Oracle open world activity where I now have a, an external monitor so that people can enjoy seeing a large image of the artwork taking shape. In this case, I had a projector and a movie screen. And yes, I do have a lot of hats. You might notice that. This was at a furniture trade show at Moscone Center in San Francisco. You'll notice also I have a printer with me so that I can print on the spot. And uh, also there will be a way for people to get the image files either with a download or on a CD. Oracle Open World once again. And I've been doing this since the, um, the program Painter came out. I was uh, demonstrating at trade shows from the early 90s, first using Photoshop, and then uh, when Painter came out I could see that that was just going to 
uh, do wonders uh, for my work. And I was developing styles and techniques uh, using painter uh, features in order to demonstrate either the software or in some cases hardware, tablets and printers and whatnot. This is an interesting, um, that first of all, it's not my hat and it's not my idea of makeup. They, they just put me into that outfit, and, but enough about that. Um, what's interesting is that the client was Adobe Systems and I, when I got the gig, I did not think it would be appropriate for me to use Painter while working for Adobe Systems. So knowing Photoshop as, I, as well as I do, I spent a couple of weeks um, developing a style. It, it's very important when you're doing this kind of live uh, work to be fast, in my opinion. Uh, pretty much anything worth doing is worth doing fast. But I am fast when it comes to uh, caricature. I do them about, in about four minutes a piece. And this uh, uh, shows an example of how my Photoshop style, uh, and you'll see how different it is from my painter style, it depends on the features of Photoshop that I think are the most powerful, which are selection tools. So for example, I did not do outlines on this face. Rather, I used the lasso tool in Photoshop to uh, outline the face and then just did a fill, a, a bucket fill for that uh, skin tone and the same for the hat. And then I made more uh, selections like oval selections and then um, for the cheeks and for the eyeglasses and then used gradient fills. Uh, Photoshop has a very powerful um, set of presets and options for making all kinds of gradients that depend uh, uh, on the, uh, the direction and the length of your, of your um, uh, drag on your, on your uh, stylus. And then at the end, a little bit of outlining uh, just to, um, you know, define the features and uh, that is pretty much it for my Photoshop technique. Oh, it, yes, the beard was done with a, a brush. See, Photoshop does not have the array of eight or 900 uh, brush presets that Painter does. It has a few interesting brushes, such as this one that looks like a, um, a tuft of grass that has built-in color variability. So I use that for this gentleman's beard. Um, and what I'd like to do now, I'd like to do my first uh, live demo using uh, a photo of this uh, same fellow and uh, show you how I do it in Painter. So let us then go to Painter and look at the, at the photo. So that's ready for me. Uh, this is my saved palette layout for when I work with caricature. And as you may know, you can uh, arrange palettes any way you want and then save that layout and give it whatever name or title that will help you remember it. So if I go back to this default layout, it's, you know, I've got my colors way over there. That's not where I want them. I want to go back to my custom palette arrangement. I'm sorry, that's not custom palette. My arrangement is for caricature. So that is then going to bring back what I want, where I want it. Now, this is a custom palette. A custom palette is the secret for working uh, fast because you don't have to continuously find the particular tool or texture or command or whatever that you want from the vast array of things that are available in Painter. So. I have, for example, my favorite tool for outlining, which is called, as you see when I click on it, it shows me with that little tool tip that it's the dry ink. Also, the, the, uh, the brush selector shows that dry ink is the current tool. And when I go to the canvas using dry ink, I can get an amazing, that's, that doesn't represent anything. I just want you to see how it can be thin to thick based entirely on pressure and that is uh, a, a tremendous way to, um, to show or to get uh, what you need from, from an outline. So let me then go to uh, create an outline of this fellow on 
a layered document that I have prepared as a template. I have two layers, basically, for working, the line layer and the color layer, which is in gel mode, so that I can, you'll be able to see the line through the color layer. So let's start with the line layer. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, make the, his chin and neck big, and that means something has to get small. So I'm going to start small up there. The hat's going to be very small. And then I'm going to give him his eyebrows, which I can see nicely. The eyeglasses. He's got a kind of a little nose, so I'll give him a little nose. The eyeglasses connect to the ears that way. And now here's where I start. Well, lips. Got to give him little, little lips. And now I can give him this big chin and neck and then connect all of that down here. Give him a collar, some kind of, there's, a, I, I love that he's got some decorative uh, uh, white thing at his neck and I'll just, you know, make something up for that. And then we pretty much have the outline. And at this point, I generally like to sign it. Now, when I go into the color layer, which is in gel mode, I'm going to switch to, um, no, I'm not. I'm going to stick with the dry ink, uh, but I want to get the recent brushes out of there. Let me go to uh, my brush selector. and OK, got that out of the way. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the dry ink, but I'm going to go into a, a like a flesh tone. And again, in the color uh, layer, just really just throw in a big blob of color, not worrying too much about uh, clean edges. I will fill this uh, the hat with black and then maybe clean up the edges. With my Option key, I'm clicking on the white background so that I can uh, change the color of the, uh, there we go. And now I'm going to switch to, uh, no, no, again, I'm using the, <laughs> I'm going to stick with the, uh, with the dry ink tool in order to create the, the pattern using white on the hat. So I'm going to do, let's see, let's see, a little of that, a little of that, and that, and that, and three of those, and, okay, fine. So again, working for speed, even though, uh, treat it that way. I will now attempt to create, oops, didn't want to do that. I wanted to zoom in a little bit. I want to show you how I use the scratch board rake tool, which looks, well, I'm using white on white, so that's not going to work. But let me get a kind of a mauve color. And so the scratch board rake is what I use to create um, hair and whiskers and um, other kinds of textures and what I've done to the default rake, I've added color variability in the form of hue, saturation, and value, and I saved that as its own special uh, variant. And so with this color, I am now going to go and put in some, some whiskery bits, and I'm just going to kind of do a whole bunch of uh, short strokes and each one is slightly different because that color variability has a certain amount of randomness as part of it. I'll go slightly darker to put in the darker areas like his mustache and this part that comes down and just under the lip and I'll go maybe over there here and then um, lighter, even lighter to do some of the of this area here, get some, get a pattern going, and even I might switch to the line layer so that I can break through that black uh, line and add uh, more of those whiskery bits. Uh, I want to give him tinted glasses, so I'm going to switch to a, my chunky oil pastel. Incidentally, most of what I use in my custom palette, which I'll show you how to make in a moment, I uh, use the top two rows pretty much for uh, everything, even just the, the top row for most things. And then just down here are some things that are special effects and experimental that uh, might 
come up every so often. I just want them to be available. So the uh, the oil past or the uh, chunky oil pastel, uh, 20 pixel size. I'm just going to pick uh, any color that I happen to like. Nope, I'm on the wrong layer. I'm on the line layer. I want to be on the color layer. Color layer. There we go. So there's going to be like a tint. Maybe I'll go in for a little another shade there and get my scratch board tool in white to give me a kind of a shine over there. Let's give him uh, some rosy cheeks again with the chunky oil pastel. That is a nice uh, tool for uh, creating soft color. And if even softer than that would be uh, created with my blender, the grainy water uh, blender. So I can really uh, blend that out. And I'm going to just give him a little bit of color on his lips with the scratch board tool, which is a very uh, small, uh, easily controlled item for tiny detail line work. And I think that is almost going to do it. I'm, uh, I'm kind of happy with it so far. I want to put in a, a pattern background. I just want to throw in a background using one of my patterns that's in, let me see my patterns. Show me patterns. Here they are. I have a uh, Painter patterns are up here, but I have a custom library of patterns that I kind of like, and I'm going to choose this one here while I use a cloner uh, in order to just throw in uh, some, this particular cloner is the Smeary Bristle cloner, and I'm only getting, you know, like some colorful uh, streaky abstract things through there, and I kind of like that a lot. So once again, and I can use that background uh, application to kind of clean up the outline of the face as well. Well, I wasn't timing myself. I have no idea if I did that in under four minutes, but this would be a good place to ask for questions. Tanya? Tom is wondering how you okay. first got started in doing these events? How do people find you? How were they convinced that they wanted you to be the artist painting at your event? So I guess it's a matter of, you know, marketing promotion. Well, it's a, it was a more matter of luck. Uh, it was a matter of being in the right place at the right time and knowing it. Um, I had been doing caricatures at events uh, for many years uh, prior to the digital uh, uh, era. And uh, I was hired by a company called Logitech to go with them to Vegas at the Comdex show in 89. And uh, at that point, I was completely non-technical. Uh, I had no computer. I didn't think it was possible to create art with a computer. And I had a real negative attitude about the whole idea. Um, but when I saw what was going on over there, I, I, I got it. I had an epiphany, uh, if you will. And um, I... I uh, started going to shows. I went uh, to SIGGRAPH uh, shortly thereafter in L.A. And uh, sure enough, I saw a company that made tablets. This is not the, the um, Wacom company, but the company called Curta. And they had a cartoonist on hand who was demonstrating the tablet by drawing cartoons. And I thought, well, if um, if if they have him, why don't they, you know, they can make room for me. So sure enough, I kind of pursued this company. And the following year, I was their booth babe. And they actually sent me to Brussels uh, to do a few hours of sketching of their uh, executives, which was my, my first trip to Europe. So um, how's that? <laughs> After that, I was just getting hired to do uh, trade shows, either at Macworld or uh, SIGGRAPH Siebold, uh, this was in the 90s when there was um, uh, the dot-com bubble and all kinds of um, activity at these, uh, at these events. When I saw uh, Painter, I think in 91 when it was released, I, um, I, could, I could tell that that was, uh, that was my future. So it's been, it's been going on since then. It was only in, in 2003, 10 years ago that actually I was able to take my show on the road and have all my own equipment, uh, which uh, depended at the time on having a, a, a portable enough and, and 
a cheap enough uh, projector that I could take with me to, to show large images on a movie screen. Okay then. Tom says thank you very much. Now I'd, we're wondering what kind of tablet you're using and do you use the standard grip pen? I do indeed use the standard pen and I am using an Intuos. I have to look on the back to see it's an Intuos uh, 4. Uh, the, um, the Welcome Company has been very kind to me over the years and they provide me with, uh, with Intuos uh, tablets. Uh, every time I, I write a new book it looks like I get a new tablet. So um, I have to admit that I haven't always been keeping up with all of the new functionality. I'm kind of used to um, the, the original and two us tablets that didn't have all these uh, buttons and bells and whistles, so uh, um, that seems to work. Okay. Uh, another one? That's great. Um, I think I've got one more here. Do you have any recommendations? How did you learn caricature okay. sketching techniques? Well, I, I always liked to draw as a kid. I, when I went into high school, they told me they were looking at my test scores and they told me I was too smart to be an artist and apparently I wasn't smart enough to realize how bogus that was so um, I kind of tried doing other things and failed. Um, getting back to art at about age 30 I started going to art fairs and showing my work and wasn't doing much. I was sitting there being bored and I saw somebody uh, drawing people for money and I thought well maybe I could do that. So I started small, I started doing portraits uh, in pencil for a dollar or something like that at these art fairs. Pretty soon I saw, well, if I gave people big noses and skinny necks and called them caricatures, they couldn't complain so much that I didn't get them, uh, didn't get their likeness. And uh, before too long I was doing private parties. This was all when I was living in, in the Chicago area. And um, so I experimented. I did not, as many uh, caricature artists uh, do, I did not train at a theme park. And I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't. I'm not, I guess that makes me kind of glad I didn't go to art school either because I've developed on my own. And it was, it was great to experiment and, and finally my, um, my, my traditional uh, drawing is done with uh, colored pencil, Prismacolor pencil. I still do gigs uh, with that. Um, and I'm even faster with pencil. I do them in about three minutes a piece instead of four. That's because there's so many choices in painter. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well thank you very much. Okay, I did want to show um, how I create a custom palette and uh, uh, so which is, you know, this is the one I, I have. I'm going to close uh, this uh, or I'm going to save this one of Daniel and put it away and then just open up my, I do want to replace it. Okay, so that's going to go away. And then I'll open up uh, just a second here. Let's cancel that and open up the template once again. Okay, here we are. Um, so here is my custom palette. If you want to create a custom palette, just go to uh, well, you'll have to go to see your brush selector, won't you? And then drag from this icon of the current um, tool, shift, hold the shift key down, then drag to your image window, and there you have the beginning of a custom palette. And that's got the scratchboard tool on it now. So when I do that, I've got the scratchboard tool. Let's say I want to add the barbed wire pen, which I have in my own palette. So the barbed wire pen then is dragged over here. Now they both have the same icon because they're both in the same category, the pens category. But here's how easy it is to make a new distinctive icon. I'm just making a, uh, let me use a darker color for that. I'm, I'm just making a barbed wire stroke and when I like the one I have I'm going to uh, select it with the rectangular marquee tool and then on that item in the custom palette. I'm going to right click for you Mac people. It's control click and then you see in the uh, pop-up menu capture custom icon and there it is. It, it even shows purple when you hover over it. So that's just, uh, how easy it is to make a, a custom palette. I'll dismiss that. Um, let me then also show you that uh, I use 
a square hard pastel, which I like to use. Okay, good. So uh, the barbed wire pen, which you just saw uh, uh, me demonstrate uh, in creating a custom palette, I like using for uh, African American hair when it's appropriate, and I, when I see dreadlocks and cornrows and whatnot. Um, sometimes if I have a blonde, uh, curly blonde uh, um, subject sitting for me, I'll take I'll use the pattern pen masked with this particular pattern, which is uh, the double helix, and I'll just go in there and make you know all kinds of curly stuff. Um, this is an eraser, that's obvious. Uh, Scratchboard Tool, you saw that. This is a uh, another one of those pens, so I, I created a a special um, icon for it to show me that it is in fact the grand pen, the gr the gradient pen, and I have a number of gradients that are also part of the custom palette. You can just drag them in from your uh, gradient library, and I use these sometimes for eyes. Uh, this was the eye I used for uh, Condoleezza Rice. Down here is the uh, the image hose, and there are times when I might want to create either a string of items or just a single item. I've got stones, and I have um, gardenias. A gardenia might make a nice earring if I just tap once with that, and uh, and and I've showed showed you how I use the cloners uh, to create a background from my selected pattern. Uh, just to go through now some of the faces I've done uh, in recent years to show you my style, which relies less and less on the um, the image portfolio. I don't think I sh told you about the image portfolio yet. Uh, in my earlier work, like in the late 90s, early uh, 2000s, I would have a an image portfolio composed of um, face parts. The way an image portfolio works is you can select an item, double click on it, and then that item goes into your layers as its own its own layer, and you can uh, distort it, colorize it, do whatever you want to with it. And I was doing that with eyes and noses and uh, and mouths uh, for a while. I'll show you a an image of that right here. So the default portfolio, image portfolio in version 12 is here on the right with all of these items that come right out of the package. My custom image portfolio that I was using in uh, version 11 and earlier uh, is composed of uh, face parts that I could then drag onto the uh, canvas or um, and then distort. Here's uh, Alfred E. Newman's nose, the Kevin Spacey's tongue sticking out. Uh, John Goodman, oh yeah, that was the dog. Um, this is Will Smith and uh, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger, I, I forget. Uh, okay, so using less of those because I wanted to finally go for speed after um, after spending my early years, like here, this is 1995, where I was actually creating uh, these faces live using the uh, face parts portfolio and uh, having fun and uh, learning how uh, how much mileage you can get out of Alec Baldwin's lips, for example. And then uh, uh, that eventually led to my studio style using uh, 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 image bits and face parts. So. Uh, back again to, sorry if I'm bouncing around a little bit, back to what I then uh, developed as my uh, much faster technique using only uh, drawing instead of uh, relying on some of those special effects. Here we see um, the, uh, the use of uh, imaginative color in the skin, tinted glasses, this uh, five o'clock shadow using the uh, hard pastel and that uh, grid um, paper. Too bad I did not use the curly, uh, the double helix pattern pen on this uh, young lady, uh, but I did uh, exaggerate in various ways. She had little squinty eyes. So I made it even squintier. Exaggeration refers to uh, if something is already a little big, you make it bigger. If it's small, make it smaller. And it refers also to ways that you can uh, create the relationships between 
the facial features. You see the scratch board rake for the beard and uh, some shiny parts, again, using the uh, oil pastel. Tinted glasses didn't seem, uh, I didn't feel a need to actually show his eyes. She had major eyebrows, put those in, and a, and a, a, a gummy smile, a lot of gum showing on that one. Oh, he was funny. And um, I think you can see that this one was uh, very fast. I uh, began to, uh, oh, this was a, uh, an event I did at the, at the Charles Schultz Museum in, um, uh, in Santa Rosa, California. I have a question maybe you can answer while you're going through these. The, the blonde curly hairbrush or the double helix pattern pen, is that default or did you create yeah. that yourself? Oh, that's a default. Yeah, you get that in, uh, let's see, I'm not sure which library. You're talking about this one here, which is uh, something that you can use. You know, if you just drew a straight line, you've got that. That's what it looks like, and you can go curly on its end. The way I have it, it's pressure sensitive, so you can make little tiny strokes or big fat ones. Yeah, um, yeah it's in the um, it's in the pattern library. Um, you might it might be a different version than twelve, but uh, it's uh, it's it's there. And I just turned it. At, you know, I just used it in my little custom collection. There are things that I have created, uh, like this one is uh, chocolate chips, and I created that one uh, by actually throwing some chocolate chips onto a scanning bed and then um, with the uh, techniques for creating a pattern, um, got a pattern out of that. So, But all these are uh, default. Thanks for asking. Sure. Could you quickly, and we, we had a question about how to size the brush. Just a very basic question. I'm wondering if you can show us how to do that. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so let's see, let's do the chunky pastel here. Chunky pastel, and I'll, I'll switch to uh, my, my standard uh, paper texture. If I want, and this is, if I want the uh, footprint of that brush to go smaller, my, my favorite way to do that is just by using the left bracket key on the keyboard. So now that's, that's smaller. If I want it to be bigger, um, I'll, I'll hit the right bracket key, and then I've got something a lot bigger. And if I want to return to the default size, I'll just uh, use the reset tool at the top of, the, uh, of my desktop. And so now it should be, is it? The size it was before. You can also go up here, and you can you can reduce size like so. You can increase size like so. Ooh, huge! And then reset. Okay, reset. It's at it's at twenty. Does that um, that do it for you? Sure does. Thank you. Okay then. So looking at a few more samples of uh, of my live work. Let's just go and. Make that a little bit bigger, and here's another one. And then we're back at the uh, uh, face parts. This is um, this was done in 2002 when I was experimenting using tinted paper and also a few special effects. For example, this uh, was a very interesting fellow with snaggly tooth teeth and little trimmed items on his uh, on his hair, and I did. The, uh, these little shiny balls with uh, Painter's amazing plug-in um, uh, layer, dynamic plug-in layer called um, Liquid Metal. So let me show you how that works. Liquid Metal, you need the dialog box open the whole time you work. You uh, can choose this icon here if you just want to make dots of any size, and they will run together just like uh, Liquid Metal would run together. So I was able to, uh, to create instantly some, you know, very complicated uh, little image there. Um, that 
is I'm just going to cancel that because I don't want it to stay there. And then let's go back to these samples again. Here is, um, you know, eyes from the image portfolio. That's Kevin Spacey's tongue once again. This one is um, an interesting combination of styles where I was using the flat graphic uh, kind of thing that I, I admired with uh, David Cole's work, just, you know, that hair is almost just one solid yellow with a few little lines, uh, eyes from the image portfolio, a mouth from the image portfolio, and I quite like the simplicity of it. Here's an experiment using the Nervous Pen, which is a one of the default pens. I, you know, I rarely create my own custom brushes because there are just so many that are there for the taking. Uh, you know, if I do customize a brush, it would be something like um, customizing with uh, the addition of color variability, that kind of thing. But uh, the Nervous Pen, which is actually just like a single strand of the barbed wire pen. Let me go into the pen uh, category again and, and find you Nervous Pen. So Nervous Pen, let's make it black so you can see it a little bit better. Nervous Pen is just a single strand of very jittery uh, line and it's interesting that the jitter is greatest the slower you go. So as you speed up you're, you're going to straighten that line out. That's a very uh, delightful uh, kind of uh, a tool. And so I was working with that when I created uh, this uh, character. I also used the dry ink for some of the lines and these uh, scratch boards rake for some of the hair. Uh, here you see a good example of, and again this was experimental because I was, uh, uh, I created this at a convention of other caricature artists, National Caricaturist Network, which has since changed its name to the um, International Society of Caricature Artists, ISCA. Uh, this per so I, I could go nuts here because this is five days of caricature artists from all over the world uh, drawing each other, uh, going to seminars, um, seeing the work of a, of a guest uh, star who could be, you know, somebody like Mort Drucker, like uh, David Coles, and, uh, and so on. So um, I felt free to just really uh, stretch uh, on this one. So you see the use of uh, the, um, the double helix uh, uh, pattern pen, and I made a circle with the double helix so that it was a closed um, space, and then just uh, hit the center with, uh, with a gradient fill. And this was done in Painter 9, it says down below. Um, again, at the convention, I used the pattern pen with the BOA, as in boa constrictor pattern, and the sushi slice is the result of just doing a tap with the image hose, uh, with the sushi being the nozzle that was loaded on that. Interesting uh, paper texture there, I'm not sure, retro I think it's called. And I got the two colors in the background uh, using a chalk tool by simply doing an invert on the paper so I could use a different color. Inspired uh, most definitely by David Coles uh, because he was the guest speaker at this particular event and I quite liked uh, seeing what, what happens when you just use large areas of solid color. Here once again is some experimenting with the Nervous Pen with a gradient fill on one eye. Again, I think treating the eyes differently from each other is uh, very exciting and um, just interesting to do. Uh, imaginative color, I give people green faces or purple faces just because. And here we see the barbed wire uh, pen used for the hair and also gradient fills for those very spooky looking eyes. And this was a, an NCN convention in 2006. The same fellow, the same artist who attended both the 2005 and the 2006 event uh, is a good way for me to show you how my style was, was switching from 
relying on these image bits. The marbles are uh, from the default image portfolio. The, uh, the, the earrings are using the, um, the liquid metal, and, there's, and actually the pencil that is sticking out of his, uh, under his lip, and this is how he, he did. He had a spike sticking out. This, this actually, uh, the one on the right, looks a lot more like him. We, and I relied entirely on drawing rather than uh, these, uh, these, these little tricks. Um, so I was beginning to get to the point where drawing was working for me, and I was um, getting much faster that way. But it was fun to uh, to try to recreate this face by sticking a pencil in there, and you know, again, as a way of saying that he's an artist, as well as a very uh, interesting looking fellow. Simplifying, continuing to simplify, and going for speed. Minimal color. If I can get the essence of a person without color, I'll do it. This fellow, Mike, sold me my first computer in 1990, I believe. And here again, we have minimal color. Just a little bit of purple to, sh to set those eyes back. And a little um, bit of uh, a scratch board rake for the chin, for the whiskers. And uh, uh, Tanya, I think I'd like to uh, do another live demo. Or if there's no time, then let's, uh, let's see if we have questions while I show the rest of these. And I know I have to wait a, a few seconds to hear you. It's OK. I'll leave it up to you if you'd like to do I there are some people asking if you're going to do another live painting we would love that but you know the end time of the webinar was yeah. five minutes ago so I'll leave that up to you oh why am I looking at 950 it says over here I got some, okay um well let's let me do a quickie let me do this uh, maybe this lady here let's uh, let's drag her over to uh, my painter, and let's reduce the size of that just a little bit, and take my uh, my template. I'll go to convert my template to the original, and by golly, I'm going to have a chance to use that um, that pattern pen for the hair. So first, I'm going to go to the line layer, just do a basic. Uh, outline with the dry ink. Let's just in the shape and the size of the hair. Let's go down to, she's got some glasses on. If I am sort of mentally analyzing her, it's that there's some uh, very strong angles involved here. She has the nasolabial folds there. She's got uh, an interesting, I'm going to really square things off when I can square off the mouth and give her cheekbones and give her a very angular and a strong jaw. So let's do that. And then let's give her a, a nice long neck, maybe an even thinner neck than that. And uh, by golly, I'll give her, give her some uh, collarbone over there. Okay, so the uh, the hair. Then I'm going to go into the color layer, yeah, and use my pattern pen with the double helix and create some of that wonderful curly hair. I love curly hair. I also paint in acrylic, and I did a series of girls with curls a couple years ago where I did uh, about a dozen. Um, 18 by, uh, no, 24 by 30 paintings of women with extremely curly hair. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty good. I'm actually going to go back to the line layer and get rid of that outline that I had before so it's not distracting from those curls. And so back to color. And come on now. Back to color. And let's give her a little bit of uh, rosy cheeks. I'm not going to give her a whole skin tone. I'm just going to give her some, some 
pinker than that, I think. Pinker, pinker than that. So let's give her some pink. Let's give her some lipstick. Let's give her some tinted glasses. Oh, not that color. Rose-colored glasses, notwithstanding. I just thought I'd go for a little, little contrast. And with the grainy water, let me then smear that out a little bit, smear these things out a little bit, blend the edges, and maybe give her a little bit more uh, in the lipstick area. A little bit more color there, a little more color up there, and uh, oh, I meant to switch to a lighter color there over here and the grainy water. Um, that is, no, let's give her some eyeshadow. So maybe that would look good as eyeshadow. Chunky oil pastel for that. And a little bit more. And just clean up some of those edges with the scratch board tool and white. Maybe with the chunky, uh, give her a little t little uh, shine on the lips. I'm going to give her a little bit more definition uh, with that uh, shadow color, the kind of mauve color, so that I can get uh, something going on over here that shows the, the shape of her, of her jaw a little bit more. Give her some of those cheekbones, maybe even darker than that for the cheekbones. Uh, let's see, come on now. Blend that in a little bit. And uh, that should pretty much do it. Thank you, Tanya, and thank you, everybody.